Hi, my name is Jessie and I am a sex educator with the Responsible Sex Education Institute at Planned Parenthood of the Rocky Mountains. My pronouns are they, them, theirs in English and ella in Espanol or in Spanish. As a sex educator, I work with individuals of all ages, providing inclusive, culturally relevant, and up-to-date information, resources, and skills to foster healthy relationships, safer sex practices, and linkage to care. There are many important and personal factors to consider when talking about sexual health. Oftentimes, lesbian, gay, bisexual, transgender, non-binary, aromantic and asexual or queer youth are often ignored or excluded from sex education programs because of biases and stigma. LGBTQ plus youth have a right and deserve to have sex education that is medically accurate, inclusive, comprehensive, trauma-informed, and shame-free. Having access to sex education include, ensures that everybody has the skills that are needed to make healthy decisions about their bodies and relationships throughout their lifetime. In this module, number six, LGBTQ plus sex ed 101, you'll have the opportunity to explore four different activities. In activity one, you will be learning all about, in case you're curious, our free sexual health text line. In activity two, you will be doing an activity called ICYC Scavenger Hunt. In activity three, you will be learning about where you can access inclusive sexual health information online, as well as a mini birth control talk. In activity four, we will answer the question, how do LGBTQ plus people and couples become parents? In the state of New Mexico, and including within Indian Health Services, all young people 13 years or older, regardless of gender identity or sexual orientation, have the right to confidential health services. Confidential health services means that your medical information stays between you and your medical provider and can't be shared without your consent or permission. Confidential sexual health services can include access to birth control, pregnancy testings and options counseling, testing and treatment of sexually transmitted infections, as well as annual exams. It is important to also note that some things can't be kept confidential. By law, healthcare providers and mandatory reporters, adults over the age of 18, must report if someone under the age of 18 discloses or tells them that they are being hurt by someone, they're going to hurt themselves, or they're going to hurt someone else. In terms of gender-affirming care or hormone replacement therapy, young people in New Mexico can access these services with parental and guardian consent starting at 13. Most physicians will not prescribe HRT to someone under the age of 18 without consent from their parents or guardians unless they are legally emancipated. The Transgender Resource Center of New Mexico is a great resource in our state that can answer more of your questions. Young people often have questions about paying for sexual health services. If someone is paying for their medical care with their family's insurance plan, it's possible that the rec a record of that visit could be sent to the insurance holder. Oftentimes, this is a parent or a guardian. If this is a concern, talk with your healthcare provider about your options. Oftentimes, young people in New Mexico can receive free confidential services at school-based health centers. Trusted adults are also a really great resource for answering sexual health-related questions. A trusted adult can include a parent, a guardian, a GSA advisor, your school nurse or counselor, as well as mentors, or any adult over the age of 18 that you trust. Now let's get started with our first activity. Oftentimes, when we want an answer to a really quick question, we Google it. But that may not always be the best way to get answers to sexual health-related questions because of the risk of misinformation. 
At the Responsible Sex Education Institute, we have a free and confidential sexual health text line called ICYC, or in case you're curious. While all of our lines are inclusive to everyone, ICYC developed a LGBTQ plus sexual health text line to meet the needs of LGBTQ plus youth. ICYC gives you access to a real life educator who can answer all of your sexual health related questions. And those include questions related to sex, sexuality, consent, healthy relationships, and so much more. To get started, all you have to do is text the keyword BLUE to the number 57890. Shortly after, you will receive a confirmation text letting you know that you're ready to send in any sexual health questions when you have them. All questions get responded to within 24 hours. Now it's your turn to practice texting ICYC. Pause this video and take out your phone and text us a sexual health related question that you would like us to answer. Our ICYC sexual health text line also has an Instagram page that you can follow at in case you're curious. On the Instagram page, you will find posts answering commonly asked questions that are related to sexual health. For this next activity, you will be using the Instagram page for ICYC for the ICYC scavenger hunt. Don't worry if you don't have an Instagram account or a smartphone, you can work in pairs for this activity. Pause this video and wait for instructions on how to play this game. As LGBTQ plus youth, it may often feel challenging or daunting finding sexual health information that is medically accurate and inclusive. One really great resource that I would like to share with you all today is plannedparenthood.org slash learn. On this website, somebody can learn more about birth control methods, sexually transmitted infections, pregnancy prevention, prevention of sexually transmitted infections, healthy relationships, consent, and other sexual health topics. When talking about birth control methods, LGBTQ plus youth may often wonder how is birth control relevant to them? Many people choose to use birth control methods for a variety of reasons. Some people may choose to use birth control methods to prevent pregnancy, but that is not the only reason. Some people may choose to use birth control methods to help lighten periods, stop periods, or clean, clear up acne. Hormonal birth control methods may not be right for everyone because of some of the side effects. Some are positive and some are negative, depending on a person's body. Everyone reacts to medication differently. Only you can know what is best for you. Talking to a trusted adult or a medical provider is a really great way to get more information. If someone is currently taking hormone replacement therapy and wants to prevent pregnancy as well as prevent STIs, some things to keep in mind are that internal and external condoms can be used to prevent pregnancy as well as prevent sexually transmitted infections. Trans men or non-binary folk who have the potential to become pregnant should be offered all the same birth control methods that are offered to cisgender women. It's important to know that testosterone is not a form of birth control. If somebody is using testosterone and wants to prevent pregnancy, birth control methods that are progestion only do not interact with testosterone. Some progesterone only methods include hormonal IUDs, the implant, or the shot. Again, only you know what is best for you. Talk to a medical provider if you have more questions or want more information on choosing a birth control method that is right for you. Now it's your turn. Please pause the video and wait for instructions for activity three. A question 
question that LGBTQ plus youth may also have is, how do LGBTQ plus people and couples become parents? The decision to become a parent is a personal decision that involves different factors. Some people may want to become parents and some people may not. Both are okay. The great news is, is that there are many ways that LGBTQ people and couples can become parents if they want to. People who are not LGBTQ plus may also use some of these different ways to become parents. For this activity, you will be watching a short video that was produced by Amaze.org to learn more. After you've watched the video, you can debrief as a group using the questions that were provided in the facilitator's guide. Don't forget, if you have more questions, you can always text ICYC. Thank you for watching Module 6, LGBTQ Plus Sex Ed 101. As we've talked about already, there are many important and personal factors to consider when talking about sexual health. Regardless of gender identity or sexual orientation, everyone has the right and deserves to have sex education that is medically accurate, inclusive, comprehensive, trauma-informed, and shame-free. Having these skills allows a person to make the best informed decision for themselves in regards to healthy decisions about their body and relationships throughout a lifetime. For future education or for further learning, you can schedule programming with a sex educator like myself by reaching out to the Responsible Sex Education Institute.org. We have offices in Albuquerque and Santa Fe, but we would love to meet with any GSA groups or youth groups that want more information on sexual health. Thank you.